Hi and welcome back. This is the second lecture about CUDA Essentials. In this lecture, I want to present how to run a function on a GPU. There are four main points I want to emphasize. First, we call kernel launching the invocation of a function to be run on GPUs. Second, CUDA follows the SAMT model in which each GPU thread executes the kernel function. Third, threads in CUDA are organized in thread blocks, so we need to decide the number of thread blocks and the number of threads per block, the so-called execution configuration. Finally, when we define the kernel in our code, we need to prepend function qualifiers before the function. We saw in the previous lecture that CUDA workflow consists of three phases and provides a guide in developing applications to run on GPUs. In the previous lecture, we focused on the first and the third phases of the CUDA workflow. In this and the next lecture, we focus on the second phase of the CUDA workflow. We will learn how to define and execute a function to run on the GPU cores. In the GPU architecture slides, we learn that CUDA follows the SMT paradigm. In the SMT model, each CUDA thread executes the same function, what CUDA calls kernel. In order to run a kernel on CUDA threads, we need two things. First, in the main functional program, we call the function to be executed by each thread. This invocation is called kernel launch, and with it, we need to provide the number of threads and their grouping. Second, we need a way to indicate that uh, a function needs to be executed on the GPU. In the following slides, we will focus on these two aspects. Once we have completed the phase one of the CUDA workflow, that is having the data on the GPU memory, we are ready to call a function to be run on the GPU. Function invocation, also called the kernel launching, is simply done by using the function name with its arguments between the parentheses. The difference with the normal function invocation is that we provide now two additional arguments between, between the triple angle brackets. These two additional arguments are the number of threads blocks, dg, and the number of the threads per blocks, db. These two values constitute the execution configuration. But what are these dg and db? In practice, these two values are related to how the CUDA groups threads on a GPU. Threads are divided in blocks, called thread blocks. The number of these blocks is dg. Each block has db threads. There is a maximum number of threads per block equal to 1024. If you want to get the total number of threads, then you need to multiply the number of blocks, dg, by the number of threads per blocks, db, dg. In addition, thread blocks are organized in grids that can be one, two, and three dimensional. In the case of two- and three-dimensional grids, we need to provide a number of blocks in each additional direction. In the lab assignments and project, we will mainly use one-dimensional grids, so we don't have to worry too much about 2D and 3D. However, two- and three-dimensional grids might be handy when you are doing image and video processing. Just to give you an example of the thread organization, we can look at the figure at the bottom of this page. In this case, we have a one-dimensional grid with seven thread blocks. So dg will be 7. Each block includes 256 threads. So db will be 256. In total, we will have dg multiply db that is equal to 1,792 threads running on the GPU. I think that with an example, it will be a little bit clearer. Let's focus on the one-dimensional case where the number of thread blocks and the threads per blocks are simply two scalars values dg and db. We initialize first dg and, to, and db to 7 and 256. We then include them between the uh, triple angle brackets. A one-dimensional grid can be also seen as a three-dimensional grid. A 3D grid can be defined by using the CUDA DIM3 type, and only one grid point in the y and z direction. So for this reason, we can also use the equivalent form uh, using uh, DIM3 in the execution configuration. When I started using CUDA, I was always confused by trying to map the number of threads to the given architecture in use. So for instance, I thought that if I have two SMs, I need to use two threads blocks. I thought that if I have eight uh, SPs per SM, then I have to use eight threads per block. But I was wrong. In fact, thread blocks and grids are abstractions to express the application work. When we launch a kernel, we specify the work we want to do. The GPU then uses its resources, SM, SPs, 
to perform the work. In general, we provide much more work than available resources because we use the technique of uh, oversubscribing to hide latency. In general, the number of blocks is higher than the number of SMs, and the number of threads per block is higher than the number of uh, SPs per SM. We will learn now how to indicate that a function needs to be run on a GPU. CUDA makes distinction between function, depending if the CPU or the GPU is calling, and if the function will be run on the GPU or the CPU. CUDA makes this distinction by preparing special function types qualifiers. The one we will likely use the most is uh, underscores underscore global underscore underscore, that is the qualifier for kernels. If we prepend underscore underscore device underscore underscore, then functions are called from the device and execute on the device. If you have a function that is called from a kernel, then it needs to be the device qualifier in the declaration. Finally, the boring default um, underscore underscore host underscore underscore qualifier is for, uh, for a function that is called from the host and executing on the host. Uh, a question for us. Which qualifier do we have before the function when we call a function from the CPU to, to run on the GPU? Give you some seconds to, to think about the answer. And the answer is underscore underscore global underscore underscore. When I introduced kernels as a special function to be run on GPU, I've omitted two important aspects about kernels. The first point is that kernel execute on the GPU and do not, in general, have access to the data stored in the host side. The second important point is that kernels cannot return a value, so the return type is always void. How do I get results from my kernel? We will need to make a CUDA mem copy to move data from the GPU to the CPU. In this lecture, we look at um, how to run a function on GPUs. We focus on four main points. First, we call the kernel launching the invocation of a function to be run on GPUs. Second, CUDA follows the SMT model in which each CUDA thread executes the kernel function. Third, threads in CUDA are organized in thread blocks, so we need to decide the number of thread blocks and the number of threads per block, the so-called execution configuration. Finally, when we define a kernel in our code, we need to prepend the qualifiers before the function name. In the next and last uh, CUDA essential lecture, we will continue looking at uh, how to run a kernel on GPU and checking additional basic CUDA features. We are done with the second lecture on CUDA and talk to you in a bit.